Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio. We are continuing this itinerary app series, and today we're going to be talking about fonts. So, do you want to give your app a custom look that differentiates it from the rest of the thousands of apps out there? Well, a great way to do this is by changing the default font. Developers usually stick with the default font given to them, so many of the apps out there look the same as far as the font goes. So if you really want to give your app a custom look and separate it from the thousands of other apps that are out there, then you're going to want to find a different font than the default font you're given. In this video, we're going to learn how to find different styles of fonts that will enhance the look of your app. You'll also learn some basics that will prevent you from making mistakes when choosing a font too. All right, so let's get started. Now in an earlier video, I showed you how to manage your project so you can get things done. And for that, we're using Trello inside of Bitbucket. So Bitbucket holds all of the code for our application, and it also holds all the tasks that we want to do. So the last task that we ended off on was prototyping a screen for trips, and then presenting it on Patreon and having them vote on which screen they liked. So that is done, so we're going to move that over here. And today we're going to work on fonts. So that's this task right here, this research task. In the next video we'll be talking about color, so let's just grab that and we'll move this over here too, because we want to do that this week as well. All right, good, so we have our task. This is the one we're gonna do, is we're gonna find a font to use. Okay, great. As with the previous videos that relate to design, I can't stress enough how important it is that the app intention is well established. We said the app's intention is to assist people who enjoy traveling, right? So everything about our app, the design, the colors, the fonts, and all the features should all communicate this intention. The app should be assisting people who enjoy traveling. So people who enjoy traveling is our market. And what does our market look like? Well, from the short research that I've done, it is an equal amount of males and females between the ages of 19 and 68 years old. So it's a pretty broad market, pretty big market there. If you're unfamiliar with intention and markets and what those things mean and how they relate to design, then I encourage you to go back and watch my video on app design where I talk about it more in depth. Okay, now when it comes to fonts, I want to start off by dividing fonts up into two basic categories. There are more divisions than this, but if you know me, I like to simplify things. <laughs> it makes them a lot easier to learn. Okay, there are display fonts, which are great for getting attention and really expressing a mood or emotion or feeling. Sometimes these are called decorative fonts. Then there are fonts that are great for reading. These express less feeling, but are more easy to read. Let's look at some examples. As you can see, the display fonts are eye-catching. Though you may not want to read a whole paragraph in that font, right? It might be kind of difficult. So these fonts are great for shorter text like headings or titles. The reading fonts are less stylish, but they are much easier to read, which is important for the rest of the text in your application. All right, in one of our screen mockups, we'll be showing rows that have trip names on them. And we designed this mockup in an earlier video. This is a basic wireframe that we started with. So what do you think would look better here? A display font or a reading font? A display font might work, right? Because display fonts are great for expressing mood or feeling. And we want something that expresses an appropriate mood for travelers, our market. So let's start off by finding a display font for our app. Okay, before we go font searching, there are a couple of words I want to teach you. Only because you're going to be seeing them soon. The words are serif and sans serif. They describe a style for fonts. Serifs are those slight lines that you see sticking out of the letter. Then there are fonts that have letters without these slight lines sticking out from them, and those are sans serif. The word sans basically means without, so it's without those little lines. I just want you to be aware of those two different categories there, the serif fonts and sans serif, just so you know what they mean. Okay, we know what we're looking for now. We know who our market is, and so we need to find a display font for our market of travelers. Let's see what we can find. Okay, the first tool I want to show you is a tool that you have right on your computer called FontBook. If you open up FontBook, you can see all the fonts that are installed on your computer. So you can start with FontBook and scroll through all the fonts and try to find something for your app's market. You know, something that really helps you communicate the app's intention. So the first one that you see here is a display font. And like a lot of display fonts, it's only in capital letters. 
Now this is just some sample text right here, but if I wanted to, I could just select all and then type in some sample text that might relate to my app more, like trip to Bali. Now this font right here, I don't think it would communicate too well to my market, you know, which are, which are travelers between 19 and 68 years old. So I'm probably going to skip over this one, but I can arrow down and check out these other fonts. Now, if you see a font like this, usually that means that it's in a different language. So what you can do is you can come over here and you can click on English and it'll show you all the English characters. So then we can see what this font looks like. And remember, we're looking for a display font, not necessarily a reading font. Okay, I don't see anything right away, which is totally fine. And as you can see, I have a lot of fonts here. That's because I've installed a lot of fonts myself. If you want to see all the fonts that I've installed, you can click on user here. So here are different fonts that I've installed in the past. Now this font looks pretty cool, right? This has a fun feeling that might communicate to my market because when you go on vacations, they're usually pretty fun. But the only thing is, I don't have the license to this font. This font can be used for personal use, you know, like if you're creating an invitation for a party, but you cannot put it into a commercial product unless you buy the license. And I don't remember exactly for this font, but I think this font was somewhere around $50 to $70. So even though this one looks good, I probably won't be using it. Okay, so that's FontBook. You can use this tool to help find a font. Another tool that you can use is Keynote. And if you remember, we use Keynote to create our wireframe mockups. And where we left off, I didn't have any text in these cells or these rows here. So I added text since we're looking for a font to use. So what you can do is you can just click these squares here. And then we can look for a font. If you come over here, you want to click on Format. And then you want to click on the middle tab called Text. And then you can select a font from here. Now the thing that's really cool about this is it gives you a little preview of what the font looks like. So it'll make it a lot easier to find a good display font. For example, like this one might look kind of cool, right? <laughs> and this one might be a little bit too much, a little bit. And this is another font, which I actually, and this is another font, which I actually don't have the license for. So I can't really use that one. But I just want to show you that you do have the ability to come through here and look at a lot of great fonts. I love how they give you this, this little preview. I wish they did this in Xcode too, to make it a lot easier to find fonts in Xcode. This is another really cool looking font. This font was $180. So fonts can get pretty expensive. <laughs> so we're not gonna use this one. So I do have one font that might be kind of good called Yellowtail. And that kind of gives a hand scripted kind of look to it that might appeal to my market. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna change this text to kind of like match what might actually be in our app. Okay, so this actually looks pretty good and I think I'm gonna keep this. I might increase the size a little bit here. There we go. And what I'll do is I'll just copy this slide. So we're gonna use another tool to look for some more fonts and then we'll update these fonts to the new font that we find. Now the next tool that I want to tell you about is Google Fonts. And the thing I really like about this site is it's really well organized. You know, they give you a nice preview of the font and all these fonts are free. So you don't have to worry about licensing when you download fonts from this site. If you click on the about link right here and you scroll down, you can see right here, all the fonts in our catalog are free and open source. So that's perfect for our needs. Now, if you look at these categories, this is a good place to start. You see they categorize the fonts with serif, sans serif. And remember, serifs are those little lines that stick out from the letters. And sans serif means the letters don't have those little lines sticking out of them. So it's without the lines. And display font. So display font is something that we're interested in, right? So let's start with just that. Okay, so you get a little preview of the display fonts, and I see one right away that actually looks pretty cool. It's this one called Lobster, kind of a funny name. And if you want, you can just select this text and you can change it. And it's a nice flowing font. It's kind of fun. 
It could appeal to our wide range of market between 19 year olds and 68 year olds too. So let's include this as a choice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button right here, this plus button, and it's going to add it to my little bucket down here of selected fonts. And then if we want, we can just scroll down. We can see a bunch of other choices. And as you can see, some of these, there's definitely for a different market, right? <laughs> so this font right here might not be a good choice for travelers between 19 and 68 years old. But you can see where they might apply to a different type of application for a different type of market. And that's one of the things that I really want to make clear here. And that's why it's important to understand your market and your app's intention of what your app is trying to do. Because you're going to find a lot of great looking fonts out there. And even though they're, they're cool looking, you don't necessarily want to use them because they're not appropriate to your market. So even though something is super cool looking, so this font right here looks pretty cool, right? But it might not be appropriate to your market or to the users of your app. This is one of the ways of preventing yourself from making a mistake. And it's by having the app's intention first and understanding the market of your users who will be using your app. By keeping them in mind, it'll help you select a more appropriate font. This font is actually pretty cool too. You know, I like this one. So that could be an option as well. So let's add that. All right, great. So I have a couple of options here. Now these are display fonts, right? And remember I was telling you about reading fonts. So what we can do is we can actually find a reading font that goes along with these display fonts. And that's really easy to do. So let me show you an example. Let's scroll back up here to Lobster and let's just click on it. Gives you a preview of the font. And if you look down here, it says popular pairings with lobster. So what it does is it tries to match up another font that will go along with it. And these are usually reading fonts. You know, as you can see, this is totally a reading font right here. So you have your display and your reading fonts. And this looks great. This font definitely does go along with it. It's a good pair. You can click on these other choices that they have too. And kind of imagine this, this font being used throughout your application. You know, and you can just look at all the other options that they have as well. In this case, they actually switched it around because maybe they think that this one is more of a display font than Lobster is. <laughs> but you just click this button to switch it back. Okay, Roboto is good. But you know what, this font is pretty similar to our default font on the iPhone. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use a, another font, uh, a reading font, to go along with this. I think what I'll do now is just stick with the default font that we have on iOS. Later on, if we want to, we can change our mind. So good, I have two fonts selected. I'm going to download those. Packages them up together, puts them in one zip file. Okay, so here's the downloaded fonts. Click on this, and we can see the individual fonts. What you want to do is you want to double click on the ones that do not say TXT. TXT is usually like a license or a description of the font. So this is your actual font file right here. Double click on that. And what's going to happen is it's going to allow you to install it. And it'll install it right into Fontbook. There you go. Okay, so that's installed. And let's go back here to install Lobster. Gives us a little preview. Click on Install Font. Now notice this one's giving me a uh, problem, a validation problem. And that is because I already have this font installed. So it's just warning me that, you know, saying you already have it installed, do you want to continue installing it? I don't, so I'm just going to close it. If you look down here, you see that I already have it installed. Good. So now, those are three different tools that I showed you right there. You have Fontbook, Keynote, and Google Fonts. Let's go back into Keynote and apply those other fonts and see how those look. Okay, so for this one, we can apply lobster which I already have selected right here and then we want to select this slide and make a copy of it and then we're going to apply that other font that we downloaded here it is right here Fugaz and maybe make that one a little bit smaller there we go all right great I have three choices now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another copy and I'm going to add a fourth choice, but I'm not going to do it in this video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to present this to my Patreon users. 
So if you have a client and you're coming up with font samples, what you want to do is you want to share with them this mock-up with your font selections, right? So what you can do in Keynote is you can come up here, click on file, and you can export it. And you can actually export it to an HTML page. Maybe you have your own website that your clients can access. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to export them to images. PNG, because I'm going to use these images and I'm going to put them on my Patreon site so they can be voted on. I'm not going to do it now because I'm still going to update that fourth choice. Okay, great. Our mockups are updated with fonts that make our app more unique. Now it's time to get feedback from our users or from our market or from your client. So this constant getting approval from your client or from your market, it's a constant communication between you and them. It's something that will happen continually through the development process. If you're interested in seeing what that fourth option is, then you can go to my Patreon site. The link is right down here below and you can vote on your favorite font. So go there, cast your vote today, and I look forward to getting your votes and making a decision on which one we'll be using. Okay, let's wrap up what we learned in this video. We learned that there are two types of fonts that have very different purposes. Display fonts are great for catching attention and expressing the feeling or emotion that we want our app to have. And the reading fonts should make it easy for users to read the rest of the text that's in your app. No matter which fonts you select, they should support the intent of what you want your app to communicate. They should be appropriate for your target market. And we looked at just a few tools that you can use to help you find those appropriate fonts. There are many more tools out there. And if you'd like to share what tools you like to use and how you go about finding great looking fonts for your apps, please share it with the rest of the community. I'd be totally interested and I'm sure people that are watching this video would be totally interested in other tools and options that are out there. So please share with all of us in the comments down below. I'd love to hear them. And thank you for watching this video.